Hello and welcome to Mobile GOP Talk. My name is Donald. Today is going to be a little different than normal. I want to remind you guys to get out and vote as always. Don't just vote on presidential elections, federal elections, but also vote in local and state elections as well. Today we're going to do things a little differently. Usually uh, we talk about politics mostly. But we've got a few stories that are local and they're a little different from politics because these stories affect us a little bit more in the heart. I wanted to bring them up. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, domestic violence because it's it's gotten pretty bad locally. I'm going to bring my wife on because she suffered some domestic violence when she was younger. We're going to be interviewing her and I'm going to be talking about a story that has hit Mobile pretty hard uh, from Fox 10 News. Uh, Michael White has been in the news. I'm not going to be entertaining any, any rumors or anything that hasn't been substantiated because that's not who I am. That's not who we are here at Mobile GOP Talk. If it hasn't been proven true, it, I'm not going to entertain it. So without further ado, let's get started. My wife is a survivor of domestic violence and I'm going to give her a chance to speak a little bit on not only just what she went through, but also how the law responds to domestic violence as far as like um, police and and uh, judges and lawyers and such like that as well. Um, well, I mean, when it happened to me, it was around 1990, between 94 and 99. I mean, you know, of course, I didn't go to 10, 20 years over it, but. He threatened to kill my family, and that's one reason why I didn't leave. For I went to the cops, uh, talked to the detective who told me to go over to the big old police station thing. And so I went over there to go do a restraining order against them so I can get away because, I mean, it got pretty bad. I mean, I've got, I still got a crack in my skull from it. I, I, I think I apologize way too much because of what he did. Like, even if I don't do anything wrong, I still apologize for whatever. And it's in, because of me, it's my fault. Um, and even though it's happened over 20-something years ago, it's still embedded in your brain. It's like a tattoo that's in your brain. You can't help but push it to the back. Pray it don't go back to the, you know, back to where you was. But every now and then, something will trigger it. Pieces of it comes back. Um, whenever I went to go put the restraining order against him, he had stole my license and, well, my ID in general. Um, I wasn't living with my parents at the time. I was actually living in Theodore, and they told me I could not put a restraining order against them, that I had to go home to them. And I didn't want to tell them that I did that, because if he knew I did that, I would have been dead that night. And Valentine's Day was like the last holiday we were together the last every anything we didn't even make it to our anniversary which was i think in february too um we didn't make it to that um on valentine's day he brought me some dead flowers after that it was playing russian roulette with my head and the bullet didn't trigger out thank god or whatever you want to call it didn't come out and then he pistol whipped me and whenever i was on the floor he kicked me in the head with still toe boots and it almost killed me I think I was begging God at that time to just take me, but, you know, God knew I had other things to do on this earth. I tried to off myself, so to speak, um, but instead I become a cutter. My daughter, my, my second, my first daughter, my second child, saw me try to off myself, and after that I just didn't do it again. Um, I figured that either he was going to kill me or... Mom was going to find my letters I was leaving around and come and save me, which my mama did. My mom and daddy did save my life. Um, my mom wouldn't let me. My mom realized, hey, you know, my daughter's going to get killed. 
uh, the way that he hit me, you couldn't see the bruises. Um, he would hit me where they would be covered up. And one time, I, I remember one time I slashed my belly with a with the um, with the razor blade, and I was bleeding and everything from it because that's where he hit me mainly. I mean, I was just trying to slash where he hit me, and thinking that that would just like detour him from wanting to do anything with me, he raped me. Um, I, I, I don't know how that turns a man on, but apparently he was a sick minded motherfucker. There's things that he did. Um, I mean, you know, like I haven't even went to a therapist about, um, whenever I did, I wasn't able to make it to that point, um, of talking to her because of course, you know, our therapists tend to leave after six months or whatever, or one day. But yeah, I ended up moving back. I, I mean, I lost my son for like three months. I had my mom take care of my son for three months. And so my son wouldn't suffer the, you know, the beatings because he was going to die if, if, if I didn't get him out of there. And so I took double the beatings. And I learned, you know, because I got choked a lot. So I learned instead of looking at him, because that, that, was, that was the last face I wanted to see when, I, you know, when that happened. Um, I learned to look at other things in the house, so I started looking at porcelain dolls that I had in the in the apartment, and them porcelain dolls had a big meaning to me at one point because of that. Um, now I don't really want them in my house because you know, I just don't care for them. But um, but I mean, you know, he used to tell me that he owed me because you know we got married, so that piece of paper was like he's the devil and he owned my soul. I mean, you know, he pretty much, he got, he got sadist, sadist, uh, what is that word? Sadistic. Yes, that, that word. I'm sorry, I can't say it. Um, he, he, he thought it would be funny, a funny game to have me strip all my clothes off. I mean, he made me do this. Like, I didn't want to do it. He hogtied me and made me roll down the hallway. Um, uh, just to go to the other end to get my clothes, and he laughed the whole time. I mean, the whole time I'm hurting, I'm hurting, and I've got rug burn all over my body. And he wouldn't allow me to wear makeup, so not because of I never got to wear makeup. Now I just barely do it. He didn't allow me to dye my hair, cut my hair. So after we divorced, I did all this. The only thing I never learned how to do was put makeup on, but eventually I'm gonna learn that. Um. Because I like to look beautiful sometimes. Even back in the 1990s, the cops didn't help you out none. And they don't even, just even today, they don't even do it. I mean, like, that's like, you know, the, the whole court thing that we just went through. How can, a, how can a judge be a lawyer for a certain town, but be a lawyer for the criminals, but yet still give fair trial in, that, in another town? You can't. How can he be yes. a litigation attorney? That's it, yes. A, a criminal defense litigation attorney yes. and be a judge? Yes, that, that, that's not fair. I literally watched a abuser get off of a six-month jail sentence. A meth head went to jail for two weeks, I mean two days, and a pothead went to jail for 30 days. Does that make any sense because it don't to me? It seems like the worst of crime, you didn't you just got slapped on the wrist. If you hear somebody yelling, if you hear somebody in trouble, instead of sitting there and acting like it didn't, it, it's not happening or it didn't happen, why don't you go help that person out? Why don't you go get them help? Because I'm going to tell you, for all the ones that are going through it right now, there is a way. I mean, there there, there is you have a life after this. I promise you, it, it might not seem There like is a that. way out. Yes. There may, it might not seem like that right now, but once you get away with it, your whole life changes, and you're like, oh, my God, what what was I doing with that, you know? Um, there is a way out. Yeah. Um. Actually, yeah, I mean, maybe um, about uh, to raise a domestic violence. Um, I can't really give much details out. Um, raise awareness. Yeah, it, it's raise, yeah, it raises awareness about domestic violence. Um, and it's a movie. Um, it's called A Way Out. That's all I can tell y'all at this point because it's not even, we're not even filmed right now. You know, I'm re a really big advocate for domestic violence. And I've got women that's, mess, you know, emailing me 
on a daily basis just about um their story of domestic violence i've got people that want to be on you know mine and marcia show you know you know i just want to let y'all know you know like if y'all ever need a way out you know there is a way out you just gotta you gotta trust if anything go to the penelope house they could save you there. You Penelope House. You got the Ronald McDonald House. Yeah, you got that. But the but the Penelope House is more equipped, I think, for it than the Ronald McDonald House is. Um, I mean, you know, you, if you're going through it, though, you need to get out. There's you people you can to. call. Yeah. Yeah, there are people. You, you got to have friends. There's people like us that you can call. Yeah. You can call me. Call her. <laughs> yeah. Safe place. It's safe here. We always make it safe. Yeah, on to his next thing. Um, you can stick around while while we sure finish the episode out. Before I get started, I want to let you know that I'm not entertaining any rumors. I'm not entertaining any allegations that aren't true or proven yet to be true. If if it hasn't. Um, if it hasn't been proven in a court of law or anything like that, I'm not going to discuss it here on my show. I, I went searching, making sure that that I wasn't going to discuss anything that was only on places like Reddit or dark recesses of Facebook dirty places. <laughs> so, without further ado... A mobile television station says they were blindsided by by his station's decision to. I'm sorry, mobile meteorologist Michael White. Michael White, that, that's exactly who it is. Says he was blindsided by the station's decision to let him go. Michael White. Posted on on his social media as I am no longer affiliated with Fox 10. They have decided to go in a different direction, and I wish them all the best. <clears throat> I was blindsided by this decision, and I don't want to leave the Gulf Coast. Now, there are several articles that that read pretty much exactly the same as what I've just told you. Now, I've I've heard rumors about this and that and this and that and it's not i'm not going to talk about these rumors here on mobile gop talk because that's all that is is rumors and and that's all it's going to be until until it's proven yet true or false so if you want to entertain those rumors you can go entertain those rumors i don't know on reddit or some dark corner of Facebook or it's on Reddit. There you go. That's well, where I read it. <laughs> that's where she read it. That's where I read it on Reddit. I, I don't I don't screw around on Reddit too much. Yeah, and there was a lot of women that went up there and spoke about against him and I, I mean I can't say if they're true or not because I don't know the dude. I just know that he was doing the weather and all of a sudden he was gone. So <laughs> So I mean, I mean, if it is true, though, I really feel bad for them women, and I'm sorry that he did that to y'all. But, I mean, if he didn't, then this woke moment has got to stop, for real. Y'all are messing people's lives up. Since the debate between President Trump and President Biden, calls for Biden to drop out have grown immensely. Immensely. <laughs> You know, you've seen. <laughs> I mean, um, I've seen and I laugh. You're right. I mean, George Clooney. I mean, oh, <laughs> I ain't watching his stuff no more. I don't know. I don't care what he says now. You can't just endorse him and then just say, oh, never mind. You need to back out. Well, and just because you lost your fans, dude, you done lost them for good. You done endorsed the wrong. Uh, it's too late, buddy. It's too, late. It's too late. Sorry, my mom loved you, but. <laughs> Let me, let me She'd be mighty here. disappointed in you right now, George Clooney. Mm -hmm. House leader, uh, I'm sorry, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries has told NPR that after the debate, he backs the president, remaining the nominee, and believes Democrats could win back control of the House. 
with uh, President Biden at the top of the ticket. But in recent days, Top Hill Democrats have not made public comments. One House Democrat, who was granted anonymity to speak candidly about the internal party decisions, worries mounted after reports from Biden's meetings with the governors last week that he may not do events past 8 p.m. The party member also added that Democrats do not have do not have much time to, for Biden to leave if he ultimately chooses to do so, but time is running out for him to bow out gracefully. I don't think yeah, he don't need to bow out because I don't. Yeah. I don't want the other two. I, I just I, I I don't think it'd be fair. To bow to, to have him bow out when it's almost election time to begin with. I mean, you know, um, I mean, I, I I'm I'm kind of enjoying the the whole. It's, and it's Biden a real reality thing. show going on right now. I mean, now. what was it called? What what are they called? Debates. Reality TV. Read debates. The one with Trump and Biden debates. I love it when them two go, because I mean, I love Trump's response always to him. He's like, he's like. He couldn't understand his stuff, and I couldn't understand him. I don't think he couldn't understand That's right. himself. You did beat Medicare. Yeah, you I mean, I, I swear I thought he said he killed <laughs> Medicare. And I swear, y'all, I, 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 how can I mean, for one, I mm. mean, like, we have friends online that's fighting lovers, and I, I don't know how. I'm like, well, you know, what do y'all see in him? Because even though Trump <sighs> as a person, I don't, you know, I would love to meet him, but I just don't. Trump is an interesting character. He is. He was one of the best presidents we've had. He kept everything down. He's been. He's been one of the best. One of the best presidents since Reagan, as far as for for our economy and our. I mean. Uh, foreign policy. Yeah, I mean, I could tell you. And for one, border security, well, I mean, Obama did fairly well, well as far as like keeping the border fairly secure because Obama deported a lot of people. My mama warned me about the sugar going up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trump, Trump did fairly, fairly good at the border, also. Yeah, Trump had very good border security policies and good uh, foreign policy. Trump was very well with the, uh, with 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 the economy. I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't see what you I don't see what you see in, in Joe Biden, but onward and forward. I thought you just left a mosquito. <laughs> yes, we have mosquitoes out here. Love it out here in the country. Love it in the country. Yeah, you got to keep a can of. Got to keep a can of deep repel. You can't use none of that cheap stuff out here in the country. Out here in the country, you got to have deep. Our mosquitoes are bougie. I'm telling you that they, they, they will not they will not stay away from you with with that cheap stuff. You got to use the deep. They'll fly away from you with the deep. Onward and forward. Trump is still rising in the polls. The debate the debate only helped make him look better. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to another debate. More registered voters believe former President Trump would do a better job than Joe Biden of tackling two. Of the top 2024, two of the top issues of the 2024 campaign, the economy and immigration, according to a an exclusive poll of by USA Today Suffolk University, taken after the Biden disastrous debate with Trump. All right, now. The poll also found that voters view Trump more capable of handling national security issues after dealing with China. After dealing with China, Biden only received higher marks on two issues: handling race relations and health care. Now, after seeing some of these videos I've seen. I don't even see how Biden would even get a higher mark on handling race issues than Trump. Because Biden is a freaking racist. I mean, he was born 
during slavery. Not just that, but I mean, he was friends with like grand wizards. I mean, he, he his daddy was a damn grand wizard. Maybe not, but you get you get what I'm saying. I mean, he 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 did a eulogy over like a a golden dragon or, or a grand dragon or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the hell they're called. I can't. Stand, all I know I can't is he stand, told somebody. Yeah, all I know is I can't uh, stand that kind of stuff. But Biden told somebody he wanted. But he, yeah, he did a eulogy over one of the Klansmen's funerals. Yeah, Biden is Biden is a complete teetotal racist. So how are you giving him higher marks on handling handling race relations? Wait, he did a eulogy at a Klansman funeral, but not at a soldier's? Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Biden is a teetotal racist, and they're giving him higher marks on handling race relations. I watched a video. I watched a video of Biden shaking people's hands and there's a young black woman in the middle of this group of white people and Biden's just over there shaking and hugging people, shaking and hugging people. He completely skips over the black lady, skips over her and goes to all the white people, all the white people shaking it. And she's like, <sighs> Biden just skips right across her. I would have been so bad. Glad handing everybody. Glad handing everybody. Hug me, buddy. Hug me, buddy. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming to my rally. Thank you for coming to my rally. The hell are you doing, black bitch? And skips her and goes to the next white person. And, she, and she's his, like, ooh. But wasn't his little statement was, if you, ain't black, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black? Biden don't even give, the black people don't want Biden it. don't give a damn about you if no. you're black. He, he don't care about you in general. He is a racist about. son of a. It don't matter what race you are. He don't care about you. So, so I mean, well, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, when it I mean, come comes on. down Think to about it, his wife. he only cares about fattening his pocket and bettering his family's wealth. Look at Hunter. He was able to have yeah. cocaine in the White House yeah. and got away with it. You, they, you can't tell me that wasn't his. They knew it was his, and they go and go. Oh well, we don't know where it came from. So, this next story, I'll, y'all, y'all know I talk about KIB a lot because KIB's done a good bit for the state of Alabama since she's been governor. She, she, she's done a lot more than the previous couple of gov- governors we've had. I, I know at least since uh. What is that? What is that? That one guy, uh, Doug, uh, something I forget. Are you talking about the one before her? No, no, no. Be- um, that was uh, uh, Bentley. Yeah. Well, yeah. Are you talking about the one before him? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I, I'm thinking back to. Uh, it, 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 he he was a Democrat that. Uh, uh, he, it, he 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 was a Democrat that ter- uh, turned public uh, Republican. Oh, I don't. Know. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but. Um, uh, he he was okay. He was okay. But what I, I'm thinking that you know, going back as far as him, you know, I Kay Ivey, Mr. Burns. Kay Ivey has has done better than a lot of her predecessors for for Alabama. She she is really really getting out there and trying to make Alabama a a wealthier state and trying to trying to move Alabama a little bit forward, even though she's an older woman. Well, if she wants she's to, forward thinking. I yeah, think. but if she wants to move Alabama closer and forward, then she needs to just stop. Um, she they, they need to get lottery in Alabama for one, but they also but, but they also medically need to. K K Ivy said, K Ivy said flat thing. out that the the gambling. Issue needs to be put up to the voters to vote on. It's not. And her you know decision. the voters are going to say no because they're going to go. They're going to take the money in Mississippi. It's, they don't it's make it's no a, sense. Kay Ivy believes that the gambling issue should be a voter issue, and I'm I'm I with her on that. Yes, I'm with her on that. Is there any voting on that? Um, I I believe that we were we we were voting on it. I don't I don't know. I don't I mean, remember in November. I don't, I don't I don't think we're voting on it. This November, but anyways, let me get to the story here. On July tenth of twenty twenty four, at ten hundred hours, the Alabama Fiber Network will be hosting 
Well, actually, that that's in the past now. Uh, the the Alabama Fiber Network launched hosted a launch. I'm sorry, hosted a launch to open up their brand new fiber network system in the state of Alabama. This is a 5,000 mile network chain and it's designed to provide high speed connective a high speed connection service to companies that service Alabama residences and Alabama businesses. Now this is a part of KIV's B Link Alabama initiative and it's a plan by the state to expand broadband high speed internet across the state. That was a bird. Uh, this is um now this is a story that I had I had initially started um a few weeks back. I told you about um about this story. The 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 Alabama B um um uh, uh, I'm sorry, Al uh, K. Ivy's B Linked Initiative I, is a story I told you about a few weeks ago. Um, K. Ivy's trying to trying to get into the more rural areas and put high speed internet in areas like where I'm living at right now. We we've, we've got I'm not going to say it's the best internet, but man, it's pretty darn good. And our manager he lives in in a pretty pretty rural area too, and they just installed fiber optics out there where he's at, and it's fantastic, man. It's I love it. It's phenomenal speed internet, and you know that's, his daddy. His daddy actually is the one who uh, designed that whole house. Yeah, I heard. I, it's I, a I nice heard. house. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all a part of KIB's, you know, B linked initiative. So, I I, I just. I'm down with Kay Ivy. I, I, I'm going to miss her when she gets, when, you know, when she gets replaced as governor, which is going to be I hope it's somebody with some, I hope it's somebody like her. I hope it's somebody with some darn common sense that right? wants, wants to move Alabama forward. And not the one that decides that he wants to buy a beach house and then use the Right? The somebody money, like Bentley. Yeah, the money to go get his wallet because he forgot about it. All right. And this is going to be our last story for the evening. Um, an Alabama Democrat state representative, Kelvin Jamichael Lawrence of Lowndes County, is being charged with second-degree forgery and second-degree criminal possession of a forged document. Alabama's Attorney General Steve Marshall announced this indictment, which has not yet been made public. Wait a minute, hold on. Did you lose your place? No, hold on. How is it not made yet public? But I'm, I know about it. <laughs> I don't know. Did you read it? But you wrote it. It was on Google. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I found out about it. I was scrolling through my Google feed and I found well, it. Apparently, I it. it's out now. Yeah. So, well, it it's it. I I just cop I just copied it right off the news. Look, look y'all gotta don't, don't don't mind that piece. Uh, he, yeah, he only copied off of Google, so yeah. I, I mean, he's only getting stuff offline. It's not like he's going to the politicians and or whoever. The indictment, there. which has not been yet made public, accuses Lawrence of using a falsely made, completed, altered builder's license with the intent to defraud. No additional detail. No additional details were released. <clears throat> so I'm not really certain what they mean by the indictment's not been made public. I'm not. Uh, I don't think they thought about that when they. When yeah, they I'm not really certain what what happened there. This is usually the part where I close it out, but I want you guys to. Um, I want you guys to. Think about a few things before I close this session out. I had a discussion with my son, and my wife is talking to our niece. They don't teach cursive in school anymore, and which is something that kids need to learn. No offense, because kids can't read in cursive, and she just found this out a couple weeks ago. 
trying to um, trying to get her niece to read something that she wrote in cursive. Yeah, it's, she can't. It's like a whole new language to the kid, and they don't teach they don't teach the Constitution in school. They don't teach the Bill of Rights in school. No, when we were in school, we had to learn that. Yeah, that, learn. that was that, that was part of. We had to recite it. No, uh, we didn't. I don't remember reciting the Constitution. Man, my teacher but might, well, I do remember learning. I do remember me. learning the at least the first ten Bill of or the first ten rights in the Bill of Rights. My teacher made me remember we the people of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, that was a lot for a little but, elementary um, schooler. We were in elementary when we had learned this. We didn't know middle school, and I knew cursive too. I knew, I knew cursive. Now I love writing cursive, but it's kind of hard to write in cursive when you when when you write in cursive. You know, all these little youngins are looking at you like, huh? If you really think about what they're teaching your children in school today, it's mostly propaganda. Yeah. Honestly and truly. Now. K. Ivy, if you go back and listen to, I think my last episode, K. Ivy signed a new a new bill into office here in the state where a teacher is our teachers are required to upload their entire curriculum online within thirty days of each semester. Now, I fully agree that that is. That is good policy there, but it's it's still propaganda if they're not teaching if they're not teaching true history if they're not if they're not teaching what what really happened and if they're not teaching us if they're not teaching your children the right way forward because most of what they teach is honest and true leftist propaganda because I mean climate change is not what they say it is I mean we we've honestly had the earth set on fire before we've had an ice age before we've had a flood before and and every religion has accounted for these these events and they every one of these events has been scientifically proven through 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 science teach your kids the constitution and teach your kids their rights because right cursive and teach your kids how to write in cursive but Ultimately, teach your kids their rights because they're not going to learn them in school. This has been Mobile GOP Talk. My name is Donald. This is my wife, Brunese. Thank you for having us.